Hey guys, today I'm going to go over uh, fuel flow in Holly EFI software and understanding uh, what what fuel flow is, base fuel flow, and what uh, you know your final fuel flow is, your actual fuel flow. I'm also going to show you a little bit of the differences between um, injectors and what you'll see in fuel flow. So what I'm going to do is go into uh, Holly EFI V6, and the first thing I want to show you is an input that you can create and if we go here, I've labeled it's labeled final fuel flow. The type is internal, right? So you'd have to enable this first, and then you'd select internal, right? And then you would go into configure, and then your source right up here, fuel final flow. So the re the, the reason that this is um, useful is because when you look at a data log, you have fuel flow in your data log, but it does not account for uh, so what, what fuel flow is showing you is it's showing you your base fuel flow, right? So it's showing you what's in your base table on your data log. And then it doesn't account for your learn table. So if there's any values in your learn table, no matter how small they are, it will show you the deviation from your base. It'll also show you whatever you have going on for closed loop, right? So it doesn't show you a 20% difference, but it shows you however much the um, ECU is actually adding or subtracting for closed loop. And it will also show you any advanced tables that you have. So if we look at advanced tables, uh, I've got a, a fuel pressure compensation for a 75 pound of pressure base. So if it deviates from basically this line here, right? You know, where, where 75 PSI uh, is, is zero, right? Zero boost, because that's my, my actual base pressure. Uh, if it ever deviates from that, like if, if it's got a hundred and, um, you know, if it's got a hundred pounds of, of fuel pressure, but the map sensor is only reading, say, four pounds of boost, it's going to make a, a change uh, based off of the deviation off of the delta between the two. So anyway, that's the purpose of the final fuel flow input that you can um, add it's there's no wiring involved in it or anything it's just you know there it is it's it's pretty simple you cannot add it to an already existing data log because it wasn't enabled in the global file for when that run was made so so anyway we're going to look at a data log here so this is a data log of two different cars okay and uh we tune uh, both of them, okay? And both of these cars, one of them is my personal car. Uh, my buddy Jordan was driving it the other day. And then another one is a, 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 good, friend, a good friend's car. And I know that both of these cars ran within 0.02 of each other, okay? So this is about the closest I can get when it comes to what they've run uh, to, to get them to, to lay over top of each other uh, as accurately as I can with two separate cars. And the reason I'm using two separate cars is because my personal car, which is in the solid line here, uses two sets of Seaman Deca 220 pound per hour injectors. So if you're unfamiliar with a 16 injector setup, we'll go right here to our engine parameters and uh, we, we select a custom, configure injector sets, um, I'm sorry, you'd have to first select the number of injector sets, which is two. Then you'd go to configure. And these are 220 pound per hour Holly, Seaman Deca, whatever injectors. And they're ran at 75 pounds of base pressure, which in effectively turns them into a 290 pound per hour injector. So there's two sets of them. And uh, what the reason I'm pointing this out is because the other car has a set of billet atomizer 850 pound per hour injectors okay so we're not going to look at his global file but they are billet atomizer 850s so when people get hung up on you know fuel flow you have to understand that there's a difference between like what what the ecu is telling you you got versus what that injector is actually giving you right so what we find a lot of times is on um like this is this is a they're both on alcohol okay so this is a the the fuel flow map from my own personal car and it idles right around 
900 to 1,000 RPM, right around four and a half to five and a half inches of vacuum, right? So it idles on roughly 13 to 15 pounds per hour of fuel. The other car idles on about 40-ish pounds per hour of fuel. And so when you're, when you're doing an alcohol combo, or any combo for that, but typically alcohol, because if you're going to be using the big billet atomizer injectors, um, they wind up having to run on a, a bit more fuel flow than you would think, right? Where the Siemens DECA injector is a smaller injector, it's a lot more accurate of an, uh, of an injector, and it actually gives you the desired fuel flow to the back of the intake valve where it belongs when it's supposed to be there, as opposed to a billet atomizer uh, that is, they're a little lazy at, at, at low pulse width and at idle. Uh, if you've ever tuned a billet atomizer, I'm sure you can attest to that. Um, and this isn't a knock on any injector. This isn't a, um, you know, this isn't a, I'm not bad mouthing a, a injector company or anything because they are a necessity for a lot of combinations. I, the other car is a race car. This, my personal car is a street car. So this street car gets driven around town a good bit. So the, the idea was we want a accurate injector at low pulse width that uh, will cruise around good, right? It'll, uh, you know, rev nice and clean, it'll cruise around good to get decent fuel economy. So this is why I want to show you this, the difference in this, because this seems to come up a lot. And I get a lot of these questions from people that say, you know, I, I don't understand, you know, I, why does it take 50 or 60 or 80 pounds per hour for this car to idle? And, uh, you know, why is it uh, so far different from when I had it on gasoline, you know? So it's not necessarily methanol needs a substantial amount more fuel volume, which it does. It does need more fuel volume than gasoline, but it's sometimes those, uh, those numbers are huge, right? Um, where like this car on, you know, my personal car on gasoline idles right around, you know, nine pounds per hour of fuel where on methanol, it only idles on like 13 to 14, maybe 15 pounds per hour of fuel. So it's not a huge difference. It's only one and a half times the volume, but it's because I'm using <clears throat> the same injector to idle it on both gasoline or alcohol. So anyway, we're going to look at fuel flow here. So if we notice here, right here, so the top, all the top numbers and all of this are uh, the 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 from my personal car okay so th these are the the straight line or the non-dotted line the, the solid line is all from my personal convertible car which has got two sets of semen decas uh 220 pound per hour injectors and you can notice here you know you got, you got fuel table one percentage where you know the other car only has one set of injectors um if you look at uh right here Final fuel flow is not enabled on the other car. That's not an input that's enabled on the other car from this data log, right? So, you know, it was enabled afterwards, but on this data log, it just wasn't. So uh, what we want to look at here, the, 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 the glaring difference here really is if we look at, you know, fuel flow, our map is not too far off. In fact, there's more boost in my personal car right here um, than there is in uh, my buddy's car, right? But we've got a 700 pound per hour difference in base fuel flow, but we also have an additional 200 pound per hour difference in final fuel flow from here to here. So we're looking at, uh, you know, a, almost a, 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 you know, 910 pound per hour difference in, uh, in, in actual fuel flow from, you know, my personal car, Versus, versus his. Now, granted, we don't have a, a, a you know, there's the 10% that's being removed right here from closed loop on his car uh, is not accounted for in this number. So even if we compare this number to this number, we're still talking about, uh, you know, 700, 700 pound per hour difference there. So, uh, so the injector, the, the, the reason being is the Siemens deck injector is providing a accurate amount of fuel flow where the billet atomizer you know is it, it it it's it takes a little bit longer for it to move so you have to actually increase fuel flow numbers which increases pulse width 
which in order to supply the correct amount of fuel. So your, your base fuel flow number, the engine isn't actually using 3,500 pounds per hour of fuel uh, because it's not actually receiving 3,500 pounds per hour of fuel. It's, you know, in essence, it's receiving less because we have to tell the ECU, uh, you know, about an injector that just doesn't um, operate like the smaller injectors. And it's, it's really just a, uh, there's really no way around it. I mean, it's it, they're, they're, it's a hog of an injector, you know? So there, it's a necessary evil for, for a single injector combination. And again, like I said earlier, this isn't a bash at the product. This isn't, you know, this isn't me talking bad about their product at all. But this is, you know, just kind of pointing out that when, if you come from a gasoline engine uh, or tuning a lot of gasoline stuff uh, or even E85, because most of the E85 cars are on a 210 pound per hour injector or a 220, uh, and you switch over to alcohol and you keep it an eight injector combination, anticipate having to use a good bit more fuel flow with a big uh, atomizer injector. So hopefully this kind of explains things. Both of these cars, I mean, when I say they ran very, very close to each other, they were 0.02 different in ET and the mile an hour is like you could lay them on top of each other. Both of the cars weigh 3,150 pounds. Uh, I mean, it's about as accurate as you're going to get when it comes to two different cars. Uh, you know, and one's a small block Ford. My personal car is a small block Ford, which you'd think would want a heck of a lot more fuel because, I mean, it's a man motor. It's not an LS uh, where the other car is an LS. And, um, you know, so this just kind of gives you an idea of – where, where, uh, you, you, you know, you end up with, with a different, you know, a big billet atomizer injector. So, so anyway, hopefully this answers some of your questions about, uh, the different injectors and the actual fuel flow and final fuel flow. And again, don't like, don't go looking through this video and be like, Oh, I need to put, you know, 3,500 pounds per hour of fuel in at, uh, 700 or 7,200 RPM and 324 KPA. Stop it. Like, don't, take this information and and try to build your tune up off of it it's it's not going to work uh you know if you don't understand how to how to build a fuel table to start with then hire somebody there's a ton of professionals out there that do a, a pretty good job um you know just if you're going to alcohol pay somebody to do it right for you and hopefully you find somebody that'll teach you how to do it uh hopefully you don't get into a you know uh, a situation where you you know you can't even start your car without your tuner there uh, so, so deal with somebody who's, you know, going to teach you what to do with your own personal car, but don't just go, you know, flying off the deep end and, and, and trying to figure this out yourself. I mean, both of these cars make a good bit of power and they're both on alcohol and they have both been, um, I mean, I, I, I do both, I do, or we do it all on both of these cars. So, you know, they've both been safe, never heard any parts, uh, but it's, and, then, and there's a ton of guys out there that can accomplish exactly what I have accomplished with both of these cars as well. So um, just, you know, take that into consideration. Hopefully this answers some questions for you. And um, have a good one.